Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hangouts with James Fee. This is episode 14. I think I ask Madeline every week what episode it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yep. figure this out. Uh, my name is James Fee. I'm in Tempe, Arizona, where I am wearing my San Francisco Giants World Champions shirt. Right? Everybody is a big fan, Giants fan. Uh, programming note, at 10.30 sharp, we are out of here because we're all going to go to ESPN3 and watch the Giants uh, parade, championship parade, right? <laughs> oh, no. So joining me, uh, Madeline Steele from WeOGU in Portland. How are you doing, Madeline? Hi. Doing fine. And then a new thing this week, normally we just have like a couple people. We've got three people joining us, so that's why you need widescreen monitors. I almost feel like i got to go out here. we got the <laughs> Mapbox guys, right? Eric, how you doing? Hey, good. Good? I see you guys all have jackets on. It must be nice and warm there. Yeah, the hurricane <laughs> brought, brought winter. Did you have to wear <laughs> boots because it's flooded, or did you guys not get hit? No, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't bad at all. Didn't you guys have like a hurricane like last year or something like that? Yeah, uh, like Snowmageddon. Oh. Snowmageddon. Yeah, see, I lose track. It's like everybody on Twitter, and the world's coming to an end, and everybody's running around like crazy. It's almost like my Kermit the Frog, you know, when he's kind of running around. I don't know if you guys know Kermit the Frog. but um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Eric, why don't you introduce uh, your buds? Wonderful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm joined uh, here by Alex Barth and Tom McRite, which uh, I thought would be a really good uh, company today. Um, to talk a lot about the, the open street map work we're doing and the recent investment uh, from Night News Foundation into that. Oops. So we'll, we'll get into some of those specifics. Yeah. But Yeah, well, uh, you know, the first thing for, you know, there's a lot of people that have told me, hey, James, you're always talking about Mapbox. Sounds awesome. And then they, they go, well, what is it, though? You know, because it's, cause it's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of parts to it, right? It isn't just Mapbox. There's Mapbox, there's Tile Mill, there's... God knows what else you guys have. Why don't you kind of give like the high level overview of what Mapbox is? Yeah, I mean, at, at the highest level, we, we need to build tools that made it easier to design really custom maps and make it really easy to, to publish those maps. So we, we started building building those tools ourselves and making them all making them all open source. Uh, I mean, concretely, you've seen what we've been focusing on the last couple, the last couple months, right? Uh, mainly investing in our core uh, base map. Uh, so we have a full worldwide uh, base map, all powered by OpenStreetMap data. Uh, the big, the big pushes there were adding terrain data to that, and uh, also adding land cover. So that was that was a huge release in uh, in early fall. But it's, it's more than just creating this big map canvas for, for people to use. It's also tools so people can make their, their own like really, really custom maps, whether they're base layers or overlays. So we've been investing a lot in TileMill, which is our open source design studio. And you saw the release, what is this, like five, six weeks ago? Um, and it's like Photoshop now for, for maps and, and some of the manipulations that we can do uh, on this. So really tr just trying to make it easier to design, uh, design and publish. And, do that. Do that at scale. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it certainly required a lot of uh, eating, eating the whole stack, and I, I think that's good that uh, that Tom and Alex are are also on this. I mean, let, let's let's be honest. Like, you you got to do everything from, I mean, from from being concerned about where the data is coming from to not being able to build the design tools to the JavaScript publishing tools to then, oh, by the way, this thing needs to scale up by like, what did, what was our number on Monday? We did 450 percent more traffic than average because of the storm. Like, we, we, I think this blog post just went out. So, yeah, I mean, to your point, yeah, there's 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 a lot going on here. But to the actual end user, what they look at is they look at Mapbox.com. They log in. They can make a map in like 30 seconds. And when they want to make something custom, they download TileMill and they start tweaking their own data. It all fits, right? <laughs> so, so why, so why, why did you guys go? What, you know, where did I mean? Well, let me back up. So, so Mapnik is freaking awesome, right? Yeah. But it's impossible to get installed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier now. I mean, nowadays you can you know, download something and it works, right? It's a piece of cake. But yeah. a year ago, year two years ago, it was like you had to sacrifice your firstborn, or, and then there was still another library you, you couldn't get installed. Or, you know. or or have Tom help you? Is that, is that, <laughs> is that Tom's well, job? He was the Mapnik installer. 
<laughs> well, before we hired Dane, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't we hired Dane for this? <laughs> yeah, just to install Mapnik for us, and then he, he ended up being useful. <laughs> oh, oh no! He's he's, <laughs> he's doing awesome work. Right. So so you, so Mapnik is awesome because it's got this great. It's a great visualization tool. Um, but let's say you can get it installed, then you have to use some weird Mapnik scripting language to create stuff. Pain in the butt. I've been talking for years that CSS is an awesome way to style maps. Um, why? I, I am so excited that you guys went down that route. It, it was it just logical, or did you guys have some master plan to, well, to go CSS? Um, to be to be totally clear, um, Cascadenic was really the inspiration for for how we looked at that problem, um, and that was uh, Mike McGurski over at Stamen who had that crazy bright idea. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just kind of looked at that and saw some ways that it could be improved, mostly in that even even that at that point, point you would do something wrong and it would just yell at you. Um, so Cardo was made to be mostly just nicer, at least in the beginning. Um, but yeah, I think it is pretty powerful. Like, CSS isn't a, isn't a perfect metaphor for maps. Um, there, there are some things that maps are just more complicated than web pages. Um, but it is immensely important that people feel comfortable or feel that it's familiar. You know, it, it kind of, it makes it more approachable. I just want to hug you now because it's like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, before, I mean, I do everything in tile mill now because it's so much easier for me to style. Before, it, I used to, you used to have to talk to 20, 30 people to figure out how to get your map nick uh, yeah. styles working. And now it's just... It's one of these things where, you know, it's like, I always say XML is, is, is a machine-readable language. You know, it's very hard for humans to parse out XML and visualize where the problem is. And there's something logical about CSS where you can say, oh, okay, I need to change the thickness of the line. I can find that. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I, I like that. So so that's where, where tile mill comes in. It's a way to easily author the maps. But then how do you publish it, right? So that's where Mapbox comes in. Mapbox is the way to publish. Um, but then I still need data, right? Yeah. You know, so data is the third. So I, I need I need a I need a platform to publish on. I need a tool to create the publish, and I need to, a plat or I need data. So that's so I guess you guys got half a million dollars to just play with data. Is that, <laughs> is that what so? I like, look with in in regards to data. What's really cool is this great these days is like, hey, well, there's a lot of people out there that have data that need to publish it in the first day place, but. Uh, the the space has opened like tremendously in the last couple of years with like a lot of agencies and organizations companies putting out really great data that you can use for uh, doing uh, visualizations. Are you guys still here? Yeah. Cool. Um, doing doing uh, map based visualizations with it, you know, and this is stuff including you know places like Natural Earth Data, uh, the World Bank is putting out geo data. Uh, you know, New York City government now, you know, important in the context of the of the storm that we are seeing here. So this is really an explosion that's happening there. But uh, uh, that that is all stuff that we are supporting here with with Tamil directly. But really, like uh, you're you're veering here towards OpenStreetMap. That was like <clears throat> one of like the uh, those challenges that we always wanted to bite off, and we got finally gotten around to that this year, is to render like our uh, own rendition of OpenStreetMap data. And provide this as a sort of an out of the box experience for users, so that you you don't need to set up your own tile server, you don't need to like install Mapnik, you don't need to be a cartographer, uh, which is uh, at least as I'm trying to be myself, uh, 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 like doing having some of the cartography skills a really tough, a really hard skill to learn. Um, so you don't need to do any of these things. You can use like uh, our version of OpenStreetMap data uh, out of the can. So this is something that you get as well with like Mapbox hosting, right? The place where they can use then for like publishing your map, and this is what we're pushing on now as well. And specifically, OpenStreetMap is what we are pushing on now as well to make it uh, easier uh, to use across the board uh, and easier to contribute to. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, let, let me jump in on that. I mean, we're we're really trying to be a ball bearing company, right? Like, we want to be make it easy for people to publish awesome stuff. And you know, to Alex's point about the about the base map. I mean, that, that map's a canvas for people to build crazy, crazy stuff on top of. I mean, just, just look at the relaunch of Foursquare. What was that? Just, just last week, week before? I mean, the, the whole thing is now a map, 
right? You go to foursquare.com and it's, it's a giant map. You, you search on it. The results come back as a giant map. So you know, our, our, our core investment in the base layer is to make it really easy to access that canvas. Because when you're working with a huge set of data like, like OpenStreetMap or anything, it's just, that, that's a lot of lifting. And then on the other hand, we're then making it really easy for you to start customizing that in crazy ways, whether you want to make your own base layer with tile mill or whether you want to make overlays. So the, the two are a really natural fit. I mean, that said, a lot, we've got a lot of people just starting to, to use Mapbox just for the base layer. Well, that's cool. So I, I guess real quick, I mean, let's, let's I mean, a couple of questions in the IRC. Well, what's the difference between Mapbox, ArcGIS Online, and Google My Maps or whatever the heck Google calls their stuff now? I mean, clearly there's a huge difference between those three. I mean, from your standpoint, what do you see is why you're different than either one of those? Yeah, uh, so, I mean, we, 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 there's certainly points of overlap here because all, all, all those other two, uh, I mean, both Google and Ezra are also trying to eat, eat the whole stack too, and I think, I, think you, I think you have to to do it right. Um, you know, looking at the full map making process, you've got a data collection phase, you've got analysis phase, you've got design phase, and you've got a publishing phase. Um, you know, I, I think, I, I think uh, a lot of Esri's tools fit really well in the data collection phase and uh, the data collection phase and the actual analysis phase. But then in, when it comes to having like a high degree of control to make, make a really beautifully designed map and having uh, a framework to, to publish that so it's, so it's really fast for millions of people to use, that's kind of like where, where Mapbox is, is, is trying to fit in. And you know, the same can be said in, in regards to our relationship with Google. I mean, we're both trying to make base maps. Um, that, uh, that, act, that act as that canvas. Uh, the way we're trying to go about it is leverage, uh, leverage all open data and build open source tools around that so you have an open source API. And that's going to give us some really, really powerful advantages on, on the publishing side space. And then on top of that, you've got tools like Tilemill that allow you to, to really make your own custom stuff. And again, like, it's not like you have to use our base map with Tylenol. I mean, you, you can use Bing, you can use Google, you can use OpenStreetMap, it's whatever. So I, I really like this just general open vibe. You know, when, when I think what differentiates us um, probably the most from, from both Google and Esri in that sense is when, when those two companies talk about platform, they, they normally talk about that from the sense of the platform they own. You know, when, when we're talking about platform, we're talking about like a really loosely joined tool set of open source tools. And some of those, we're, we're, we certainly are investing in the whole stack, but we're also oftentimes swapping out uh, key components. I mean, what, Alex, you worked with Polymaps on Monday. Uh, Tom, you probably worked with Leaflet in the last couple hours uh, in regards to some of, the, some of the tracing work you're doing on, on OSM. So, like, you, you have this real core focus on, on open. Yeah, so it gives you, it gives you as, as, as you said, it gives you a platform, right? I mean, that's the whole thing you're trying to do. Um, and we don't so, have to own it all. No, no clearly not, right? Because you're you were able to build Mapbox upon the work that others did. Um, you know, Mapnic, extend Mapnic out, and keep pushing it out, and then give those tools back to the community, right? I mean, that's how this stuff is supposed to work. So, Tom, ballpark, how, how many different open source uh, library components are part of uh, Tama? Oh, I mean, we can actually just check, but it's uh, it probably has about 50 dependencies um, directly, and then each of those just branch. They just branch like crazy. And and again, like just so just so all your all your viewers get get what we mean by open. I mean, we've been we've been putting stuff out on GitHub for years, and you you just like really put it out there, put it out under BSD license. Like we're we really just want to make this stuff accessible. Yeah. Yeah, and the, I guess it's worthwhile pointing out, <clears throat> specifically with Tamo, I think it's so pretty great to see that we're, 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 we're leveraging here Mapnik, which is um, a project that is essentially like has its cradle in the OpenStreetMap community. Uh, we're, we're leveraging here heavily like Backbone.js as like the main framework for how we organize our code, which is, uh, which is straight out of like the Document Cloud project uh, uh, developed under uh, part of the umbrella of the New York Times. So, like, we are we're really like using a lot of code that is being generated out there by the open source community. And that open source community is uh, sometimes actually not a, uh, not only a geo open source community. Yep. And uh, so, give you a sense of process, like the the big lift around um, around the recent launch of uh, Tilemill 
uh, 0.1, you know, there were, there was a huge, you know, D Dane and Artem were doing significant lifting just on 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 core core map neck. You know, we're you know always always bring it bring it up a level, take it back to the root. Where can we invest at the at the lowest possible point? So I mean, having Artem on the team this last year has 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 been absolutely incredible. Dane and Artem are are coming out to town for a sprint on Sunday, uh, and, and we're going to put our heads down again. Yeah, so I, it's funny. I just you, when you said uh, tile mill 0.10, uh, someone just t emailed me about a week ago saying, "I told you, tile mill only went 1.0." <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's funny how people, you know, things like uh, version numbers matter to some people. And, you know, what's a beta, what's an alpha, you know? Right. Uh, we're all alphas <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> so, so the Knight Foundation grant, um, it's a lot of money, uh, though it's probably not a lot of money <laughs> at the same time. But it's got some, I guess, conditions attached to it, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff that you have to do to earn that money. Um, what are some of the things you're going to be focused on initially um, now that you've got this? Yeah, no, I mean, the Knight's vision on this has been absolutely, absolutely incredible. This is our third time working with Knight, and they, they continue to go lower and lower down down into the stack, right? They've invest, I mean, they, they invested in tile now in the early days. It wasn't a lot of money uh, at, at the time. But it was, it was really critical money, and I, th I think this is really critical money to invest uh, into, one, making it easier to add data into OpenStreetMap, two, making it easier to like engage with the OpenStreetMap community and make that community more social. And then lastly, make it easy to get, get data out. Like those, are, those are on the high-level uh, broad strokes. That's what Knight uh, really, really wants to see. And we're coming back after State of the Map uh, Portland uh, for the US, and Alex was out. Uh, at, at State of the Map in Tokyo, I mean, we are we are just so fired up right now uh, after after this pretty pretty intense fall. Uh, actually, being in the same room with so much of the so much of the community and those general principles of making it easier to to improve the data and improve some of the community infrastructure that's rarely invested in, like everybody's fired up about that. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> so, I guess from a from a data standpoint. You know, uh, we we've you know we OGO we've been working with OpenStreetMap a lot in the last month, um, trying to expose it, letting people download it. Um, OSM is very complicated. Um, there's a lot of nodes, a lot of ways, a lot of British ways of naming things that just don't make any sense to Americans. Um, are you guys going to focus on some of that? How to <laughs> translate the English language into American? <laughs> is there money in there? Frank, Frank will go to that. <laughs> But in all, in all serious though, um, you know, the things that make OpenStreetMap wonderful, it's open that anybody can, can donate time and effort to it, make it unwieldy. Um, Look, especially for people that are used to, you know, databases that are normalized and beautiful and documented. Um, so OpenStreetMap is also an incredibly tough problem, right? It's like an incredibly large database uh, that is being edited really frequently by a multitude of users. Uh, there is a constant stream of like uh, updates just running out of like uh, planetosm.org. So we have uh, we have like a, a, a whole series of these tools and a whole series of these complexities just because we're solving a very hard problem. And we are also like very sort of cognizant of that fact. Are we walking here uh, in with with like our um, with, with like the extra resources that we have now based on the night grant? We're walking into a situation where we really feel we can uh, change things to the better and really help change things to the better. But we also know that there are, that the problems are very large, right? So in many ways, like the the five hundred thousand seven hundred seventy five thousand the five hundred seventy five thousand dollars here are are a lot of money and actually not a lot of money. So we need to be very smart about like where where to put it, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I think your idea of like translating like British English into, into American English is very good. We should put this like very high on the, the priority list. But um, look, look, really, like what it means now from an operational perspe perspective is that we we won't be able to go and, and create like the grand plan of like how we're going to spend all those five seven five seven five Ks. It's more like we need to uh, we need to like now engage on like some of these complexities. And really, like, build code from the ground up in a very, very iterative manner, and being very open and like being working very closely with with the community here. And this is why, you know, like Tom right here is is is, is working now like uh, with the uh, 
ID editor project that actually predates the Knight Grant, um, uh, with, uh, launched by uh, Richard Fairhurst, who is uh, uh, one of the key contributors in terms of editors in the OpenStreetMap space. He's the guy who wrote Potlatch and Potlatch 2. So we really have like an incredible opportunity here to join efforts with him and to like just really like um, make sure that like a lot of this knowledge that's in this OpenStreetMap community right now around like these topics like better editors, uh, better data tools, better social tools is really something that goes straight into like uh, into in, into this work right now. Yeah. So so I guess is there when is the new when is the new editor coming next week? <laughs> Tom. Well, <laughs> <laughs> camera already automatically cut to him. He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, you can uh, you can play with it online, but it doesn't it doesn't actually edit yet. Um, it's it's definitely going to be a long term project, and um, Richard has already thrown a lot of time into it. Um, editors really just have to they really have to think about the entire complexity of OSM. So it's so it's a big deal. Um, but I think that this is, I'm really psyched about this project because basically OpenStreetMap, the people in it have an incredible wealth of knowledge. And so we're in a position to both kind of learn a ton from them really quickly, but also have enough time to like really finish a project. Because like Richard has awesome ideas and like just not enough time. Um, so we're just trying to like expand time a little bit. So how much, I guess that brings up an interesting question, how much time are you guys putting to working with the OSM community? I mean, obviously, you want to make sure you don't duplicate efforts and they want to help you out. Um, what, what are you guys doing in that aspect? So right now, we are essentially running a team of, um, let's say, one, which would be Tom, and then like a whole series of half pe people, you know, I would be one of, one of them. There's like a lot of other stuff going on at the moment as well. But short is, we have like just a handful of people running on this right now, like pretty slowly ramping up our effort and uh, like setting our goals here on a like very, like, again, like very iterative, uh, uh, iterative like uh, uh, manner, uh, iterative schedule. And the idea concretely with ID is to uh, run out like an alpha one version uh, uh, before like uh, the end of December. Uh, really something that is launched and, and that can be like, you know, used for editing OpenStreetMap data and then we have to just reassess from there. Um, but really this is how we are taking it right now, like really step by step. There's a couple of other like smaller efforts going on now on the site and worthwhile mentioning there would be probably the work that we're doing here around like the OpenStreetMap watch list which essentially is about like browsing change sets faster but this is very experimental at this point. We're working here very closely with um, with Pavel Paprota from, from Poland, uh, who is uh, taking the torch here from Matt Amos, uh, who is one of like the first guys who has been working on the OpenStreetMap uh, project, is in, 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 is like a member of like OpenStreetMap, I think, since like 2004. And uh, we're working closely with them to just uh, explore further what could be done here on that level. And there is like a couple of exploratory things that uh, are going on uh, around that as well. But really, we're taking it very much like step by step. Um, and uh, to to like spend our money smart here. Is this is this stuff gonna especially with the editors? I mean, are you are you gonna replace existing ones like Polatch and Jasm? So we'll you see. Gonna... You know, like the first iteration here, the Alpha One iteration, is not going to replace Potlatch Two, right? I also think that you know, like if we did like an ideal job here, and that editor would really would be really awesome, you know, and like a lot of other people think it's a really awesome editor. Potlatch 2 would be still around, right? I mean, like, there's some legacy to take care of. But I think, you know, Rich's vision here is certainly to replace, like, Potlatch 2 in the long run. And uh, for us, like, uh, getting to Alpha 1 here is going to be, like, the most important goal and then, like, reassess from there. I, I would love to be able to, like, see the finish line from there and go, like, look, we can, we have a real shot here for, like, replacing uh, Potlatch 2. Uh, but that, there, may, there may also be other outcomes here. So, right, like it's going to be really important to nail like the Alpha One uh, 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 work here, together with like all the people who are like right now uh, pushing on this. And you know, this is not just us and Richard. There's also like uh, people like John Firebell uh, chiming in. Uh, and and it's going to be really important to like get the circuit point by Alpha One, and then and then just reassess from there. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean. I you know, my my son loves maps because I guess I love maps and so he's always trying to do it. He gets on and he starts editing and you know Potlatch becomes you know he's nine and I don't want to give him you know he's a young guy but it just becomes difficult for him. Um, so are you guys doing a little UI uh, usability studies with your editors? I assume. 
that you guys are really good about usability. That is absolutely going to be a priority here, right? Uh, and and this is really also something that is going to be uh, with the, the the part where we'll be learning most between here and the Alpha One release. Like we'll learn a lot about hey, what are actually like the uh, the user interface paradigms that we would like to implement here, and what are like our sort of first assumptions that we can make about this? How what, what can we nail here for Alpha One, and how can we then look at at improving this? Because uh, I think it's clear to uh, to most people looking uh, at the editor space very closely in OpenStreetMap that that um, there are shortcomings with how we do things in Potledge 2 right now, and there are shortcomings in how we do things in JOSM. How as much as I love JOSM, but like you know, it's clearly not an, ex an editor that is like intuitively self-explanatory, which would be sort of if I put like some goal on that, like uh, like that would be like the goal to attain, right? Like it should be. It should be a self-explanatory tool that I don't need like a big manual for to get yeah. started on. And I, so I, I think, the, sorry, go on. <laughs> sorry, um, yeah, the Stevo would like to wanted to ask, uh, are you going to make a dumb editor to make things easy for the usual type of editing? And um, and I actually have a related question. Uh, I've got a few members of the OSM community that I know in Portland who are concerned that if we make editors too accessible to average people, that the quality of the map will be degraded, or there'll be more vandalism or something. Yeah, and I heard the same thing from Navtech. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I guess I'll answer that one. Um, so there's definitely the hope of making simplified editors, but there are really dumb things. Like, for instance, if you make an editor where people can only put points on a map and they can see, like, satellites, uh, like a, a satellite image, then a lot of the time they'll put points on places where people have already drawn like really nice polygon buildings and they'll just duplicate data. Or if you make an editor which just changes road names and somebody changes the road name, it changes it for the wrong section of the road. Um, so there are actually kind of limits for how easy or how simple you can make things while still making them consistent. But I think as far as the usability that that you can do, there is so much that we could improve that like we don't actually have to go to a dumb editor. We just need to make like one that is well designed um, in in different ways. And as far as lots of people editing the map and vandalizing it more, I, I mean that's a problem that you have with any online community. And OpenStreetMap has had a lot of vandalism, and it has pretty good mechanisms against this and increasingly good mechanisms against this. Mm -hmm. Like, you just have to handle a large community. Yeah, and they, as you said, they already have those mechanisms in place. I mean, they've been doing this for five, six years now, I guess, right? So, it's nothing yeah, I mean, people, people are crazy. And I, I do see that quality problem uh, uh, as, as well, and I, I would actually argue that, you know, as, if, as long as we have an editor space that is very hard to evolve because it involves like very like monolithic tools and as long as these tools are like hard to use we actually have a pretty high risk of like you know weird editing um, sort of practices so like our editors need to be a lot better in guiding users exactly for the reason because we want good data in OpenStreetMap and yeah. right now what does the editor do to really help me tagging? Yeah, very instance, good point. You know, yeah, well, I think growing, I think this is a, has been an incredibly welcoming community. I mean, for me, what I think the first real time I started to get involved with during Tom's big, uh, big import in, in Africa four years ago, uh, the larger we can make this community, the, the better, as it's going to improve data quality, it's going to improve, improve the amount of data in, in certain areas, and we just have to build our tools to really facilitate that growth. And that, I mean, this is a core infrastructure investment that we're talking about making right now to, to do that. Yeah, okay. So this segues into my next question. What's, when's Vector coming to Mapbox? More than points. <laughs> so one last, one last thing before we jump into Vector No, here. I got to know. <laughs> one, 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 just like one quick minute. Like Eric just mentioned the word investment uh, again, and it, it, I know this sometimes causes... Uh, causes a little bit of confusion. I think it's worth pointing out this is a grant. We don't need to pay back money, which is 
the great part for two reasons. Well, A, we don't need to pay back money. <laughs> but B, also, <laughs> but B, also it means that we can look at like the kind of work that we're doing here a little bit differently than if it was like an investment that we need to like have some sort of immediate return, return on, right? And that this is important to pay, pay out. And this is this is really goes like to the credit here of the the Knight Foundation that uh, decided to like give us a grant here instead of an investment. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point about grants. I mean, it allows you to focus on long-term as opposed to short-term, um, you know, investment, long-term investment versus, you know, I need to get money back in the next quarter. Otherwise, you're all fired. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that, that that's not just our perspective with, with OSM. I mean, that's that's our perspective with, with everything we're pushing on right now. Um, I mean, to, to, your, to your question in regards to, to vector rendering, we're, we're very interested in vector rendering, both um, both server side and, You're interested. and on, on device. <laughs> um, uh, and we, we absolutely absolutely see a lot of those a lot of those values in regards to immediate uh, immediate roadmap stuff. Uh, that that's that's not happening happening immediately but you can not even, that, not even immediate oh man you're not even you're not even <laughs> sugarcoating it he's like <laughs> no, no I, 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 absolutely absolutely not um, you, but you can bet a lot of the investment that we're making in core tools like Mapnik right now and how we're thinking about tile mill uh, would absolutely play play out into that okay fair enough I'm not giving you <laughs> I don't know. I thought you were going to say, yeah, the next version of Tile Mill, the next version of Mapbox, all vector based, and you can um, rotate the map. You can take your monitor and start, mm. you know, doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's work. Yeah, yeah. No? So, do you miss oh. this? Why you got us on the phone? <laughs> totally. I was all that other stuff. Was like, I, <laughs> I just wanted to get the vector answer right. You know. Uh, <laughs> well, t I hate Tile. Right? Tile's got to go away. Tiles I, have yeah, their purpose. I don't. This actually just isn't isn't really. I think. This is one part of vectors which is a little bit um, misunderstood. Um, so, like, for instance, on, on small data sets, yes, you could use, like, a Mapbox map with, um, a, like, one shapefile or one GeoJSON or, you know, protocol buffered GeoJSON and put that on the map and use, like, leaflet or poly maps or open layers to display that. But as soon as you get larger than that, you're using tiles again. Like... And you're right, still yeah, rendering vector, them. Tile. You're just rendering them in the browser instead of in Mapnik. And right yeah. now, like as far as whether vector rendering is worth it, it's kind of whether your browser can do a faster and better job than Mapnik, and whether your vector format can do a better job than PNG. Okay, so and, I don't disagree. Anything you just said, so take some of that half a million dollars and put it into nice <laughs> generalization <laughs> tools to help you generalize vector lines in the browser. <laughs> so I mean, so on that, you're you're gonna. Uh, you, you should watch the uh, the election play out on on Tuesday on USA Today. Um, what ele oh, a oh, there's the election. Oh, I keep forgetting. That. You know, I'm not not. <laughs> no. So so if Obama wins, we get vectorized, generalized tiles. And if <laughs> who do I got to vote? I already voted, so I'm screwed. Um, <laughs> I didn't know it came but, down to that. But yeah, the live the live result map is uh, that that we've partnered with USA Today on is all is all vector based, and then having having terrain tiles behind it. It's wicked and, fast. Yeah, Dave, is that, is that, Dave Cole and the team has been leading leading this out. It's, it's absolutely incredible work. So, is this using the Mapbox infrastructure, or did you do this as a one-off? It's using parts of the Mapbox infrastructure. So, Tony Q, one of our uh, viewers in the IRC, says, uh, "Vectors and tile mill or Mapbox? What for? It's dreamy the way it is." <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, vectors on the. Oh well, yeah, I mean, I, I get that. Like, right? I know. Like. Rasters, once you generate them and you don't need to change them, everything's fine, right? You can have them, you can keep going. That's how you make money, right? You create one base map for the world, and then you keep hitting it for 10 years, and then you've got your return on investment. Yeah, I but I mean, if, if we were able to have our base map where people could adjust their own fonts or to start making like really much more granular tweaks like that at the world view, I mean, yeah, of course that would be awesome. Yeah, kind of like it, what Google does with their it, tools. But theirs is a little, you know, theirs is sort of faked. Right. No, no, I mean, we, we, we've tried to fake as much as we, 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 we've been able to through, through some of the tinting and color changing and whatnot. Um, but, I mean, like, look, look at this phenomenon happening where it's like, hey, Apple needs their own map, Google needs their own map, Amazon needs their own map, all of them not making uh, necessarily a profit on, on those maps, but just needing to have that map and having that kind of control. Uh, we agree with that. 
we think everybody is going to want that. And the closer that we can get to building these open source tools that allow people to make their own map, make their own experience, make their own canvas, uh, that's, that's exactly where we're going uh, all the time. So if, you, if you're ever wondering what we're working on, it's, it, I mean, that, that's our main thing that we're, that we're keeping in focus. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I want, I want my own maps branded as James Fee. With your own font, the whole, my the whole own deal, right? Yeah, Comic Stands. I want everything in Comic Stands. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a, it, it's not, no, you got a licensed Comic. Is there an open source Comic Stands? I don't know. I don't think that's just, I think you just, nobody could ever do that project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking no. at looking at look, is Tom is Tom is Tom is Tom googling it now? Yeah, he's like, there's got to be one in there, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm googling it now as well. Free Comic Sans yeah. font, <laughs> right? Because I think Microsoft looks owns that, interesting. You know why why can't we have that as an option? Just <laughs> Um, oh man! But you know that. But back back to back to that point. And actually, your 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 first question and my my nav tech joke, bringing that together. I think I I th I think a lot of the big players are all investing in the same in the same space right now, and I I, I feel really good that there's going to be some some nice partnership opportunities in that. You know, we've really enjoyed conversations uh, with with Google over the years about about how we're looking at Carta CSS and what that could potentially mean. Um, we've, we've certainly had productive conversations with, uh, with Esri about things like MB tiles and offline maps. Uh, a lot of that has uh, thankfully become actionable through, uh, through Brian Flood at Arc to Earth. There, I mean, he's just killing it. Like if you basically, if you have, if you have Esri and you want to be able to start interacting with, with Mapbox, Check out Arc to Earth. His new syncing tools just just incredible. Um, and then and then what? I was up in I was up in Boston last Wednesday, hanging out with uh, with the Nokia team, just kind of talking. Hey, here's where we're pushing on design wise. And they were talking about some of the vector stuff they're doing. And it's it's really gorgeous. So even even non traditional uh, open source players, or better say, more traditional closed source. Players, uh, I, I think, are helping push the push the creative space forward, and everybody's really seeing this this new age of both map publishing and map design starting to come together. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh well, Madeline's telling me we're out of time. Yeah, Plus, you're as I said, afraid. I gotta watch. <laughs> right? Plus, I gotta go watch the Giants World Series. Uh, <laughs> Great. I know you're all going to do that right now, so go to ESPN3 and go watch it. So, guys, Alex, Eric, Tom, thank you so much. It was fun. Hey, thanks so much thanks for having us. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Good, good luck, and I'm looking forward to Vectors. I can't wait. <laughs> no, Next November week. is going to be awesome. Oh, tomorrow. Oh, to who said tomorrow? Who's raising their hand for tomorrow? Is that Tom? I'm just trolling you. Yeah, you always say tomorrow, right? He's... <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and then you you wake up. You're like, oh crap! I told him it'd be done tomorrow. <laughs> I get it. All right, yeah. guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, next week uh, we have no guest, right, Madeline? That's right. It'll just be one of our sort of roundups. Yeah, it'll and shop. just be talking about God knows what. <laughs> you know, it should be fun. But uh, we'll see you all next week. Same. Actually, you guys go on daylight, or you get off daylight savings, right? Doesn't that happen next week for you guys this Sunday? We get off daylight saving Sunday on Saturday to Sunday, yeah. Yeah, I don't do we don't do that in Arizona. We just stay the same time all year round. So I always get screwed up. So I should I gotta remember it's eleven o'clock for me, so <laughs> I gotta be all organized here. So everyone have a great week. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week. Take care guys. Hey, cheers. Bye. Bye.